Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey everyone, so Discipline Priests are one of the most dominant healers in 2v2 and 3v3 alike, only really being overshadowed by Mistweavers right now. Discipline, if you don't know how to play against them or what they're capable of, can seem like a nightmare to play against, being capable of insane damage while still keeping their team alive. Well, don't worry, we've consulted with Zuniaki, one of Europe's most esteemed Discipline Priests, and asked him to reluctantly share the secrets of how to counter his class of choice. Welcome to Knowing Your Enemy. And first up, we've got something that I think a lot of people struggle with, and that's knowing what to interrupt. Discipline Priests are unique in the fact that they have two schools of magic, both with healing spells. So if you kick one school, they can just heal with the other, resulting in some very frustrating gameplay. Well, there are a few things you should know. The two schools of magic available to Discipline Priest are Holy and Shadow. Holy has, for the most part, damaging abilities with Smite, Penance, Solace, Power Word Shield, and a few other spells whilst Shadow having the bulk of their burst healing consisting of Shadow Mend as well as their crowd control. Okay, so when do you kick what? Well, it's quite simple. If you want to reduce the disc's damage output as well as their mana efficient healing, then you should be looking to kick Smite and Penance. Doing this will force the priest to have to heal with their high mana cost and zero damage Shadow spell, Shadow Mend. Alternatively, if you have someone low and you want to stop the disc easily recovering, then you might want to kick Shadow Mend, as this way they have no real burst healing to quickly recover, having only the option to cast Friendly Penance for any form of real single target healing. It's also worth taking into account some different scenarios. For example, when a Disciplined Priest has their defensive cooldown Rapture popped, it allows them to spam a more effective Power Word Shield, absorbing a huge amount of damage. While this is up, you ideally never want to waste kicks on Shadow, as it's often a bait. If you can, kicking a Priest on Holy during Rapture will make this cooldown a complete waste. But the truly most effective way of dealing with Discipline Priests is possible in 3v3, and that's chaining your interrupts. What I mean by this is that one person on your team will kick Holy, and then when he swaps to Shadow, another player will kick that. Needless to say, knowing what and when to kick on a Discipline Priest will greatly improve your chances of winning. Okay, following our first way to counter Discipline Priests, this goes hand in hand and is line of sighting them as much as possible. But why is this important? Well, as mentioned, Discipline Priests like to heal via their damage, which comes from Penance, Solace, Smite, and a few other abilities. If you're not directly training the Priest and locking him down, making sure not to tank his damage will heavily reduce not only his damage output, but more importantly his efficient healing via Atonement output. You can hit his partner and line of sight the disc, this will force the Priest to then have to do one of two things. Either he'll have to bite the bullet and heal without the extremely effective damage dealing spell, Smite, or he'll be forced to sacrifice positioning to try to secure damage and thus healing, which you can then look to punish. Moral of the story, if you stand out in the open and just let the Priest spam Smites, you're going to have a bad time. Discipline Priest brings actually quite a few defensive cooldowns, namely Power Word Barrier, Rapture, and Pain Suppression. Whilst all are very strong, these defensive cooldowns can actually be played around. Let's start with Rapture. We touched on this a little already, but Rapture buffs the Discipline Priest's shields by 200% and makes them spammable. As mentioned, kicking a Priest on Holy during this time makes him unable to use these shields. Not to mention, the biggest counter to Rapture is in fact Purge. If your composition or class has one, make sure that as the Priest is shielding with this cooldown, you instantly purge the shields. This renders Rapture utterly useless. Power Word Barrier, on the other hand, is again extremely strong. Often Priests will spec into the talent called Dome of Light. This strengthens this cooldown by adding a 25% increase on the damage reduction. Again, though there are ways to play around this strong defensive, as Barrier is a positional defensive and its benefits are only reaped whilst inside. This of course means that knock effects like Ring of Peace, Explosive Trap, Shining Force can be used to heavily counter this defensive. You can also use displacement effects like Death Grip to remove the target out of the dome. A cool trick you can also do is to mind control the enemy priest to gain the benefits of the barrier for your own team. And our last cooldown is Pain Suppression. While there isn't all that much that you can do about this, it's worth knowing that priests can use this while stunned. A common way to play around Pain Suppression is to never lead with stuns when you're about to crowd control against priests. For example, if you're playing a hunter, instead of trying to intimidation pet stun the priest into a trap, which he can then Pain Suppression, it's instead better to lead with the trap. 
This way the priest is unable to get this cooldown out for free. All right, our fourth and potentially the easiest way to counter Discipline Priests revolves around one thing, slows, slows, and more slows. Discipline Priests are hands down the most immobile healer in the game. Despite having access to speed increases like Body and Soul and Angelic Feather, they have absolutely no way of removing slows. But why is this so important? Well, trust me, as a Discipline Priest player myself, there's nothing like trying to reposition or move in for crowd control when you're just permanently slowed. And slow? and slowed for the entire game. It's harder to avoid crowd control as you can no longer use your speed increases to use the pillar to your advantage. Not to mention you can't ever land a psychic scream to save your life, and if you attempt to, you're just going to be stuck in the middle of the map. If your class has a slow and you can easily apply it, do yourself a favor and keep it applied to the Discipline Priest at all times. All right, our fifth and final way to counter Discipline Priests is by playing around one of their trademark abilities, Premonition. Commonly referred to as Death Premonition, this talent allows Discipline Priests to deal damage to themselves a short time after pressing the ability. This enables Premonition to break you out of CC effects that break on damage effects. For example, Polymorph, Blind, Freezing Trap, Paralyze, and many others. Now, the easiest way to play around this ability is simply Patience. Before you go for the crowd control onto a Discipline Priest, either make sure they're stunned beforehand or play the waiting game and look for them to use Premonition before you, then use your crowd control effects. It's also worth knowing that Premonition is on the Shadow School of Magic, so if you interrupt Shadow Men, it then sets you up to have an easier time securing crowd control. However you decide to play around Premonition, don't take the risk of getting your crowd control broken by this ability. All right, that's going to be it for our five tips in order to counter Discipline Priests. We hope this was helpful and be sure to let us know what class you want to see next. Thanks for watching.